You know, right, guys, welcome back to the channel. This video is going through an article on the strikeengine.com website. It's a used Mercedes Sprinter review. If you want to read the article rather than watching this video, link is in the video description. So why am I making this video? Basically, if you're looking at buying a used Mercedes Sprinter, this is what I've thought is uh, the good and the bad of it, the problems that I had, and how it compares to uh, the Boxer and Ford Transit of similar years 2016 2018 it was a uh, 2016 sprinter it was a 313 cdi which means it had 130 horsepower and it had around 197,000 kilometers this one i had it for two days and i did uh, 400 kilometers on it in uh, on all types of road so first impressions of it basic but solid nice inside nothing was worn out it felt well made it just didn't have um, the gadget count wasn't high it didn't have like soft touch materials, but it felt solid. Nice place to be comfortable. So going into a bit more detail, the interior, plenty of storage everywhere on the on the sprint. I would say maybe it even edges the transit for storage, which is saying something. You had these cubby holes here. There was one uh, below the gear stick, massive glove box. And then you've got the door bins as well, had plenty of uh, storage in them as well. Uh, layout of the controls, everything was as you would expect it. Uh, seat had plenty of adjustment uh, the up and down here on the on the back of the seat pad obviously it could recline you know fantastic with regards to the longevity of the van you can see here 197,000 kilometers this is what the driver's seat looks like you know it's almost new so you know very hard wearing van stereo when it was this alpine unit not sure if this was factory fit or not Either way, the uh, sound quality was was good. It's not great, it's not amazing, but it was definitely good, not a bad stereo at all. The uh, longest we drove this in uh, one hit was uh, around 90 minutes, and I got out with absolutely zero aches or pains. I didn't even think about comfort. I didn't even think about comfort the whole trip. So in short, I think I could drive the, the van all day with absolutely uh, zero problems. Pedal position spot on, steering wheel fantastic. Here is actually one area where the Sprinter scores above the transit the pedal position i found on the the clutch pedal on the transit it's very close to the wheel arch so when you push the clutch pedal down to the bottom the uh, wheel arch push, pushes your um, foot across the pedal but none of that in the in the sprinter no uh, no annoyances like that with regards to the pedal position exterior wise this was not a perfect van plenty of dents and scratches on the outside but it didn't appear to have any rust so i'm not sure if they started galvanizing the sprinter on the, this generation because if you've been uh, looking at older sprinters you know that uh, they're not immune to rust uh, exterior just mentioned the headlights here headlights were fantastic low beam high beams were amazing also it had these uh, running lights down the side which came on when you turn on the side lights so all in all you know lighting wise on the outside anyway fantastic steering uh, look the steering wheel on it is huge compared to the transit but the size of the steering wheel was completely in keeping with the size of the van, so I thought it was completely normal. I don't think I need such a small steering wheel as they have in the Transit. It's a van, so I don't think the uh, the steering feel in the, the Sprinter was any worse than the Boxer or the uh, Transit. I mean, it was quite easy to guide it down a country road, not problem at all. Engine, in this one, it was a 2.2 litre inline four. It felt really sweet engine. I mean, it could have been a six cylinder, you know, it felt so smooth. The Ford Transit that I had was also supposed to have the same power, 130 horsepower. But I'd say the Sprinter just felt like it had the edge over the Transit in the speed. And with regards to driving on a country road overtakes, I'd say it's much nicer to do it in the Sprinter. As a country road machine for overtaking, I'd much prefer the the sprinter fourth gear seems to go from quite low speed to quite high it's a very good long gear whereas in the transit i'd always find that i would have to be change gear as i'm doing the overtake sprinter none of that the one issue i did have with the sprinter was like coming back one night we were doing like 130 kilometers an hour for you know i don't know 20 minutes maybe and the light came on in the dashboard saying that the oil temperature was high but dropping it back to 120 and the light went out. Now, I'm not going to say that's a Sprinter problem. I've got a feeling that's probably maybe the oil was just due for a service in it. And that's the reason. So I'm not going to count that against the Sprinter. Fuel economy. Now, this is a real plus of the Sprinter over the Transit. Just got out of a Transit this weekend. I put 210 euro in it to go 975 kilometers. 
at one euro seventy a litre, that works out at twenty three point six UK miles to the gallon, or twelve litres per hundred kilometres. The Sprinter, on the other hand, we did four hundred k, and we only put seventy litres in it, and that was when the fuel was a little bit more expensive at one eighty a litre. So the Sprinter was getting twenty nine UK miles per gallon, or nine, or using nine point seven litres per hundred kilometres. In short, the Sprinter was using around twenty percent less fuel than the Transit, even though it felt like a faster van. So that is for me. A massive 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 plus of, of for the sprinter over getting a transit ride quality it was normal in my opinion for a van a uh, load area and access uh, nothing really different here they're all the same with regards to the lashing point so nothing to write home about here the sprinter same as any other van in this category with regards to lighting in the back I'm not sure if there's something happened to this specific example that I had but there were no lights in the back of it but say this is, I can't imagine it's like that from the factory, but let's assume it is. I don't think that would be a hard issue to fix because you can see that the wires are exposed in the back. So if you needed to put LEDs in the back, if you just tap into uh, to these cables here, it's not a big deal. Uh, load area access. For me, this is also quite a big thing. I don't want to be having to go up big step to get into the back. The Sprinter and the Transits that I've had have all been rear wheel drive. The Sprinter, in my opinion, does a better job. The, the step is, there is a bigger difference in height between the step and the load bay than there is in the Transit. In short, the Sprinter is easy to get in and out of. Okay, they're not front-wheel drive vans. You know, a front-wheel drive traffic is going to be super easy to get in and out of. It's going to be even lower. But for what they are, the Sprinter has the edge over the Transit. The brakes, I said it's touched on this earlier about the pedal position. I didn't have to make any allowances to the Sprinter when I got in it whereas in the transit the uh, brakes can feel a bit grabby i found in the first few millimeters of travel with regards to outright braking power i'd say the sprinter is as good as the transit no issues there the dashboard this is the the mercedes dashboard this is the sprinter dashboard you know it's basic but it's got everything you need you've got this trip display here it's got um you know distance covered uh, range left average speed all this sort of stuff it's also got this digital display for the uh, fuel, which is nice. You're not having to guess how much fuel is left by looking at, uh, look at, looking at a needle. It may look a bit nicer in the transit, better quality display in the transit, but this was not bad, easily readable. I've got no issues with this at all. Just the uh, transit may look um, you know, a bit flashier. Gearbox, honestly, the gearbox in this felt the same as the Sprinters that I drove back in the late 90s. It feels a bit agricultural, but never miss the gear. Gears always go in. It feels hard wearing. It's a little bit noisy, but they all seem to be that way. So all in all, I think the gearbox is, is fine. Uh, gear ratios. Now, I found this to be a real boon over the Transit. Well, not, not over the Transit. That's not the right thing to say. I just felt that the gear ratios in the Sprinter were fantastic for anything. Every time I used the gearbox, I just think to myself, yeah, they've absolutely nailed the gear ratios here. It was a short first, which made me think that maybe sixth was going to be short also. But no, it's it's they've done everything. It's, it's got a short first, and you've got a long sixth as well, and everything seems to be properly spaced throughout. So absolute joy to use, absolute joy the the gear ratios in the in the Sprinter visibility. I'd say the Sprinter is the same as the Transit. You've got the the windscreen comes down at this angle, and then the the bonnet goes at a slightly shallower angle. Sprinter and the Transit are the same in that respect, so I can't mark one above the other. The one thing I would say that I found better in the Sprinter, but to be fair, they could actually be exactly the same mirrors. They look exactly the same, but the impression I got with the Sprinter is that maybe they put convex glass here so it's convex vertically both the mirrors and convex convex horizontally so you basically you can just see more out of the mirrors in the sprinter than you can in the transit this is the impression i got so all in all would i buy one i had two problems with this sprinter i told you about the oil temperature issue again i think that was down to a servicing issue and the second was the air conditioning packed up after an hour or would pack up after an hour of use but again, I'm not going to mark the Sprinter down for that. I think that's probably, again, a servicing issue with the air conditioning. So ignoring those two issues, would I choose a Sprinter over the Transit? Yeah, absolutely I would. Interior, maybe the interior in the Sprinter was not as nice to touch as the one in the Transit. But to look at, I would say, in my opinion, it's sort of subjective, obviously, I'd say that the uh, Sprinter was nicer. With regards to storage, it was as good or if not better than the Transit. 
the seats were comfortable. And I think another important thing was that the adjusters in the Sprinter worked, whereas both the adjusters in the Transit uh, had issues with the adjustment, one of them being broken. I said about the fuel economy, which is absolutely massive, that I could forgive a lot of the Sprinter, but fortunately I don't need to. But that's just the cherry on the cake, the fact that it's so much better on fuel. At least, at least the vans that I had, the Sprinter was so much better on fuel than the Transit. That makes it an absolute no-brainer for me. The fact that... Um, it goes down the road nice. The gear ratios in the gearbox are fantastic. I don't have that annoying issue with the uh, clutch pedal in the Sprinter. And the fact that it's easy to get in and out of the Sprinter just makes it, you know, a slam dunk, in my opinion, uh, for, the, for the Sprinter. Now, if you're looking at the used vans, maybe the Sprinter is going to be more expensive than the Transit. But again, in my experience, the fuel economy in the Sprinter was much better. So... You know, even if it's a couple of thousand difference, two, three thousand difference, I think, especially if you do a lot of mileage, you're going to get that money back and more because of the better fuel economy in the Sprinter. So that's it, guys. That's the video. If you've got a Sprinter of this generation, uh, feel free to let me know how you found it, the pluses and the minuses of the van, what's been good, what's been bad. As I said, I only had it for two days. If you've had it for longer, you know, let me know if I've got anything wrong, is anything better than what I said, etc, etc. I look forward to reading the comments. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching the video. Look after yourselves and I'll see you again in the next one.